everyone, my name is Birdburn and today we are talking about scene optimization again because because it's important, okay? So if you are seeing that your harmony scene is a bit slower and you're having trouble making a playback of your scene, um, this video is for you. This is like a part two because I did another video previously, so go check it out if you want even more tricks. But yeah, so today what we're going to talk about is scene optimization, so how to make your scene playback faster. When you work in harmony or in any software for that matter, what you have showing up on screen will impact your performance. So at the moment, I have my camera view, I have my timeline, which has a lot of layers, but I can't really help it. Like I'm, I'm animating a cutout rig, so I need most of these layers. So this is fine. But there are some views that are very hungry in terms of performance and stuff. So camera view, timeline view, they do take a lot, but they're kind of necessary. So we will accept their trouble. <laughs> However, here is a list of other views that are very power hungry. I'm going to show them to you right now. We have the top view, the side view, the X sheet view, the perspective view, any extra camera views, and any extra node view you would have. Because sometimes people like to have like three camera views showing up and three node views as well, which is understandable because it's fun to have a camera for your scene and then you can also have like an extra um, camera view. And then you set a certain display to it, maybe your mouth, or sometimes people like to see their master controllers in their camera. Uh, people can have like different displays and stuff to see that. It's not bad, it's just that if you see your scene is struggling, then close these windows and you'll be fine. So yeah, for example, I'm gonna not show my perspective. I'm gonna keep it tabbed, so then it's gonna make it faster. Like if it's there, it's not so much of a problem. It's really if it's showing up, it will slow down your OpenGL. So I'm just gonna keep it tabbed. I'm gonna just show my camera. My X sheet, like you can remove it. Side, I don't need to see that as I play back. Top, I don't need it either. So this will make it faster. And also, you know, not showing up your node view. Uh, like keeping it tab as you make your playback can also help if you have, you know, a big note view. Yeah, so be mindful about that. So the list include, but it's not limited to the top view, the side view, the X sheet view, the perspective view, any extra camera views and note views. There's probably more that I don't think about at the moment. But yeah, so be mindful of what you have showing up on your screen. If you think that this view might be like power hungry, like, you know, tab it or just remove it altogether. I've been told that tabbing it is fine, but sometimes I'm paranoid and I just like remove it altogether. Maybe I'm superstitious. I'm probably superstitious. Don't quote me on that one. Another thing that makes a scene super heavy is pass-through composites. Or should I say, the unnecessary use of a pass-through composite. Yes, I'm gonna go over here in my node view and just show you a very typical case of misusing the composites. I do need to make a video about composites, so if you don't know them so well, please read the documentations about them. I, I'll make a video soon. So many things I need to cover, man. Okay, so I have an HL, an iris, I also have an eyelash, so I have lots of pieces in these eyes because they're kind of sophisticated, okay? And then all these pieces are connected to a composite. That composite is not set to pass through, it is set to bitmap. And this is because that eye, I will rarely, if ever, need to kind of layer in Z space, like the iris on top of the eyelash or whatever. So that piece is kind of considered as one drawing. And that is what is super important to understand when it comes to composites. So pass-through composites, I know people are like, oh, in a rig you have to use only pass-throughs. No, that's not true. The reason for that thinking is that a bitmap composite will kind of flatten everything down to one Z depth, so kind of like one image in a way. The pass-through composite, if I set that to, to pass through, it would allow me to take any of these images and then, you know, move them in Z space and have maybe the, the eye white show on top of the eyelash and everything. And this is why you use path through composites. They're very important. But in that case, that eye, since I don't need to move all these pieces one by one in Z depth, I am setting it to bitmap. And the reason for that is that if your composite is set to path through, yes, all the Z depth information is kept individual. But it also means that any effect that you put under the passive composite will go up the chain as if it, it needed to be read in ZDEP as well. So it makes it considerably heavier, like very heavy, to use passive composites when you don't need to. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to not use passive composites. For example, if I go to my arm, my arm is connected to a passive composite, but that's because sometimes you need one part behind and one part in front of the body. There is a lot of kind of mix and match that goes in there. But for example, if I were to link that armor pieces to a composite, I would choose a bitmap because these little scales and this kind of armor piece will always stay at the same Z depth. So my rule of thumb to help out people learning how to rig when it comes to bitmap and passive composite is to think if the piece is on the same Z depth all the time, set it to a bitmap. If you need to move in all the different pieces in Z depth, make it a pass through. And this will help you kind of start to understand the difference between the two and try to use them more wisely. 
um, that's my recommendation. <laughs> so unnecessary pass-through composites in the node view will impact your Harmony Scene's performance in OpenGL. Pass-through composites have the potential to be heavier than bitmap composites. This is because if an effect node is connected to the pass-through composite, the effect will affect all the elements the layer is attached to. While using unnecessary pass-through composites in the node view will have a lesser impact on simple hand-drawn animation scenes with like five or eight layers, this will have a significant impact on a scene containing rigs that have hundreds of layers. This is because rigs and composited scene contains a huge number of pass-through composites that will be linked to many effect nodes. So it's kind of like a snowball effect, right? So if you're having issues with your rig scene being still down, we recommend making sure you don't have unnecessary pass-through composites in your rig. For example, like I shared, the iris composite is a bitmap composite. It's okay to use a bitmap composite on the eye because you will never need to layer the eyelid, iris, eye whites, or anything else in Z-Space. However, on the arm composite, uh, I may use a pass-through at the end because it's a necessity since I will have to move these different parts in Z-Depth and I don't want them to be flattened down by a bitmap composite. Okay, so I hope this was helpful and I'll see you again next time for another video. Bye-bye!